So I'll go ahead and apologize for the not so great sound quality. There was no way for me to get my good mic over here, so I'm just using this webcam mic. I'm just documenting my experience with compiling COBOL and FORTRAN on my Alterduino. The whole reason for this is that they're just two languages I've been learning, and I thought, what better way to learn them than practice on this Alterduino? A replica of something period appropriate, I suppose. You can learn more about that kit at the uh, at Adwater and Stir, that's where I got it from. And of course, I can't make an Altair video like this without mentioning Mike Douglas, who makes the Altair clone, A, and B is probably the best resource out there on software for the Altair and archiving it. Um, ignore the silly sounds in the background, my cats are getting into a little tussle. That's just what they do. Anyway, so we'll go through uh, compiling COBOL and FORTRAN on CPM. So, my base configuration for the Altair, give her a hard reset, um, doesn't have any of the ROMs installed, um, so you don't have your disk bootloader, your hard drive bootloader, um, in the normal fashion where you'd go and examine them and run. Um, instead, I'm just using all of those ROMs and the shortcuts um, like this that uh, comes built into the Alter Duino. So you could make it more realistic if you want to, um, but it doesn't really change the operation of this. So, so let's start with booting CPM. I'm going to mount the hard drive by flipping up 13 and 12 and then the image number. There's, um, you see it mounted something called MS Fortran 80 CPM. That's just a custom hard drive image that I made. There are tools to do that. Um, or you can just edit an already existing CPM image and use floppy disks. And I'll actually demonstrate that here as well. For those of you who don't know, when you boot CPM from a hard drive, you get your floppies one and two at drives C and D. So that's how I got my COBOL compiler, which spans two disks and leaves no space for source files. That's how I got all that on my hard drive. So, real quick, I'm going to go ahead and mount uh, my COBOL disk just to show you that. So there's disk one, toggle in drive one, and there's COBOL disk two. Now I will toggle in the shortcut for the hard drive bootloader and hit the shortcut switch. And now we're in CPM. So just to show you, um, I brought the compiler in on these floppy drives and just copy them over to the A drive with a pip utility. If you're wondering how to recreate this sort of setup, that's the best way. It doesn't require any special tools or anything like that. It just requires a couple of images and knowledge of how to use the pip utility. Anyway, let's go back to our A drive. And I wish there were an easier way to clear the screen. Maybe there is, but I just don't know what it is. Um, I'm using vEdit, which is a text editor. I find it's the best for using, for programming languages, other text editors I've tried add random uh, nulls and carriage returns and stuff that just mess with the compilers. So, um, first thing I'll do is COBOL, because that's what I've been learning lately. I'm going to load into the editor a square root calculator that Microsoft included with their COBOL compiler. And this is just to show you the editor at the same time. So we can see this uh, COBOL source file here. Um, this is our square root calculator. I'm just going to hit escape twice and then EQ to quit. Yes to abandon file. I didn't make any changes. EX would be what I want to use if I want to save. And of course we could have also just used type and then put the name of the source file and just got it out that way. So let's compile this. I'm going to load up the COBOL compiler. In this case it's just called COBOL. Now these Microsoft compilers uh, typically follow the same format. You start by specifying a name for the object file that you want, if you want one. Um, in this case I do. So I'm going to call it square. This comma, uh, tty and colon, is how you say that you want a program listing as it compiles onto the console screen. And then this equals is where you tell it what source you want it to come from. So it's a little strange logic with the equal sign, but it makes sense to me. We're saying that we want a relocatable object file that is equivalent to the compiled source. So in this case, our source is called 
uh, square O. We don't have to specify the extension. COBOL just assumes that your source file is a .cob. We'll hit enter and we'll watch it compile. So there's a program listing that we asked for. You could also just as easily send this out to a printer or something if you wanted a printed out listing of what you're compiling. Uh, I'm sure there's some benefit to that if that's the kind of thing you want. Certainly that's uh, the kind of thing you would see on old mainframe compilers. They would spit out the listing on the uh, paper that they're printing. Which makes sense given that we're using COBOL. I figured I might bring up some sort of mainframe something. Anyway, no errors or warnings. We wouldn't expect that because Microsoft gave us this file. So how do we execute this? Well, there's two options. We can execute it directly from the linker, or we can use the linker to make an executable command file for CPM. Uh, I prefer the executable command file, so I'll go through that process. L80 is our loader. First thing we're going to do is we're going to specify the name of the com file that we want. In this case, I'm just going to call it square, and then I'm going to put this slash n. That tells the linker that no matter what we're doing, we want to generate an output file with the name square. Now we can actually go and do the linking process. So I'm going to load my relocatable object file, which I should have showed you a directory listing. It's going to show up as square.rel. And just to show you, I'll put the extension in this time so you know that's there. We'll let it load. And now we need to tell it to link to the COBOL library. That's what this slash is going to do. Now, if I wanted to run it straight from the linker, I would do slash G. That would link and then run. Um, I don't want that. I want to make my com file, so I'm just going to link and exit. And because of that slash N, after this linking is done, we're going to generate a com file called square. This always takes the longest, so we're going to let it do its thing. All right, look at the lights. Um, we're done. I know I have a tendency to assault my enter key. I apologize. Bad habit that I'm trying to break out of. Uh, we can see the linker's done. So just to show you everything we've made, I'm going to tell it to list anything named square, regardless of extension. So we have the com file that we just generated and our relocatable that we got from when we did the assembly. Being that we have a com file, let's just run square. And this is our COBOL code now running in CPM on the Altair. Um, I'm going to give it a random number and it's going to generate the square root. So the square root of 6,533 is 80 and all that stuff. Um, I don't know what the iterations means. Somebody who's probably way smarter than me knows what that is. Um, but yeah. So we'll control C to back out of it. This program allows you to do that. My Fortran program that I'm going to compile doesn't, unfortunately, but is what it is. For Fortran, it's the same process, but we're just going to do it just because we can. Let's first start by typing out our source file. Um, what I did was Mike Douglas always uses the interface age prime number benchmark. Um, I just translated that kind of line for line into Fortran, so it's not optimized. It's just an exact copy of that sort of into Fortran. So that's what I came up with. There's a comment in there just because I wanted to make sure that the comments worked. Um, but there we go. Um, right now, if we take a look at the listing, we only have the source file and we have our backup because vEdit made a backup when I changed some stuff in this a while ago. So just like COBOL, we're gonna start with the compiler. F80 is the Fortran compiler. We're going to say that um, we want an, a relocatable named Primes. Put a listing out to the console. And we want that to come from our source, Primes. Now, like I said, you don't have to specify extension. And I didn't last time, but just for fun, I'm going to do it here, just to show you that you can if you want to. So here goes our listing. And it's a small program, so that's already done. Um, a lot of these Microsoft assemblers, and I can't remember if COBOL did it, I that quickly forgot. Um, the only way to exit is by using your interrupt control C. 
Otherwise, you can't back out of it. I don't know why they didn't include a quit command, but oh well. The linking process is the same way. I am going to go ahead and load up our linker. I'm going to tell it that I want a file called primes. So that's going to generate a com file named primes. I'm going to load our relocatable and then link it to the Fortran library. Now in this case, I will do slash g, and you'll see that once we link, it's automatically just gonna execute. All right, so the linking is just about done. Uh, we hope to see program execution starting uh, from the compiler, and then it will, I'm sorry, from the linker. There it is, and it'll just be crunching prime numbers for us. Um, there we go. So that's a way that you can just directly run the code whether you make a com file or not. In this case I did make a com file so I'll show that. Um, like I said the only way out of this one is to reset. So let's do ls primes and everything with that extension and you see we did make a primes.com so if I didn't make this I could just run the code from the linker but since I made a command and there you go, that's um, just the general process that I've been discovering on my path to learning Fortran and COBOL on period accurate systems.